Has the MCU finally done it? After years of giving us redesign after redesign of the classic Spider-Man outfit, have they finally given us a comic accurate version of the Spider-Man outfit? Yeah, I I mean this thing is it's pretty much as comic accurate as it gets. Do you like that swinging animation? That was brought to me by my very own CGI team at Nero Does Stuff and at Ugo9P1 who has and will be providing me with animations and graphics of this costume for this suit dissection. Nero did the swinging animation, and Ugo provided the models, and I want to make sure I give them a big thank you for doing so. But why are we doing this? Why am I hiring a CGI team? And why am I paying them fairly? Because the suit isn't real yet. This Spider-Man suit is getting the Civil War treatment for now, where he's entirely CGI, and hopefully in the next movie when this suit shows up, he'll be wearing a real costume. Hopefully, I mean, hopefully. We know, we know the MCU. You know, at first I thought this suit was real, at least for the part where Peter steps out of the window for the swing, but I've heard it isn't. Then I can't really tell myself, but if someone could let me know in the comments, I'd really appreciate it. You know, now that I'm taking a closer look at it, the fabric on the table? That doesn't even look real either. The edges of these fabrics look way too thin. So I guess for the entirety of the video, we'll have to rely on my CGI team's renders for references of the costume. Take it away, Ugo. Ah, here we are. Isn't this nice? Before we get to actually talking about this dang thing, let's set a quick disclaimer. These criticisms could be made void by the time this costume is actually made. Colors could be changed, fabric's different, so for now, just take this as a criticism of the model on screen, much less the actual costume to come. So off the bat, I have to address something that's kind of been bothering me about all of Tomathan Holland's suits. Let me show you what I mean by showing you some more work from Ugo. So here we have most of Spider-Man's suits from the MCU, omitting the Iron Spider and the Stealth suit. But they're all included in this conversation since they have the same issue. Have you noticed it yet? Maybe try to think about it. While I tell you about today's sponsor, the Ridge Wallet. This wallet has built-in RFID protection to protect people from stealing your credit card info as they walk by. This thing is sleek and compact. It holds up to 12 different cards, has a cash strap on the back, and a very useful notch for getting your cards instantly whenever you need them. And of course, when you're all done, you can just slide them back in, simple as that, and it goes right back in your pocket and you're done. The Ridge key case is just as cleverly designed. It's also got that same notch that you can use on the wallet to help you get your keys instantly. It also has this little spring mechanism that pushes your keys up towards the front so they're not wiggling back and forth in your pocket. It's also got a helpful little hook on top. So if you wanna slide your car keys or garage opener or whatever onto it using a carabiner, you slide that right in and there it goes. These wallets come in over 30 different colors and they have landfills and landfills worth of five-star reviews. These would be the perfect gifts for your relatives for this Christmas. And if you use my link on screen, you can get up to 40% off up until December 22nd. That is December 22nd using my link to get up to 40% off. I want to say thank you so much to Ridge Wallets for sponsoring this video. And of course, let's finally get back to it. All but one of Peter's suits have a different set of lenses. I'm not complaining about how the standard MCU lenses are formatted, I think they're absolutely stellar. They have a nice shape, they're pretty round, and they're well sized to fit Tom's head. But I mean, it would have been nice to ask for a little bit of, you know, variancy between each mask. Like, even the stealth suit has the same lenses and they didn't even have access to any of Peter's suits while they were making the damn thing. Plus, this thing is supposed to be a disguise. You're not supposed to be able to tell it's Spider-Man, but the lenses are exactly the same. Like, I'm not saying these two need to have different lenses, but some variety every now and then would be nice. It's kind of odd how much the MCU recycles old elements from Tom's suits into the next ones. I kind of like it, as it gives Tom a sense of trackable growth in between outfits. For example, the web patterns on Tom's suits has not changed much. They drew one Spider-Man web pattern and kept it almost identical. All the way from the homecoming suit, to the far from home suit, and then this suit. I feel kind of flicked about the carrying over elements, but I just wanted to address that they're there. Like they even carried over the lines from the black portions of the last suit onto this one. I'm conflicted about them, like do I think they're overly complex for no reason? Yes. But like, they aren't that visible. 
Hell, people weren't even sure if this suit had lines on it at all at the first place. Plus, it doesn't really matter much to me, since the blue on this suit is actually shiny this time. I know some suits in the past have had some sort of degree of shine to them, but never this much. This blue fabric is shiny as hell, and I know some people might be turned off by the shine, but it unironically makes the suit more comic accurate. The way Spider-Man is shaded in the comics gives a black undertone to his blue portions of the costume, giving his muscles more definition. There's no way to replicate this comic book shading without just outright putting it on the costume, but using shinier fabrics makes it look more realistic. Even I replicate this technique in my own costumes. Alright, let's finally talk about these logos. They are good. I have nothing bad to say about them. They are harmlessly modernized with small separations in between these different parts of the spider emblem. Also, apparently to some promo art, the front logo could be bronze. I really hope that is not the case. That would clash really hard with everything else in the costume. But now that we're talking about emblems, there's something I have to confess. While the back logo looks amazing and I think it fits into the back of the costume very well, I still think this suit missed out on having a major chance to make this suit the most undebatably comic accurate by giving it the comic, classic, round back logo. I don't want anyone to think that I'm hating on the back logo of this current suit. I like it, okay? I like it. It takes up a rounder space on his back, it's a good shape, the logo itself is very good looking. But I do think a classic round back logo would have really blown this suit out of the water for me. And the soles on this suit are red, apparently, and I like it because that's comic accurate and it's cool. Anyway, that's it. That's all I have to say about this design-wise. It's pretty apparent that this costume is the most accurate Spider-Man costume ever put in anything. I don't think an argument about this can even exist anymore since this costume essentially captures all of the elements of the suit from the comics and even takes faithful liberties to get there, like with the blue shiny fabric. But there's still a bit of a lingering question in my mind. How is this costume going to change when it's made into the real thing? As far as I know, there's only one circumstance that we can reference in terms of the MCU making a CGI costume and then making a real thing, and that's the Civil War to Homecoming suit. I've seen some people say that the Stark suit looks darker in its appearance in Civil War than it does in Homecoming, but now that I'm looking at photos of the costume, I think it might just be the way Homecoming was shot that makes this costume look much brighter in comparison to how it looked in Civil War. They'll probably use the same fabric they've been using for the Stark suit and the Far From Home suit for the red portions, and then a shiny blue fabric for the blue portions. I kinda hope they change the shade of blue though. Part of me is really craving for a more cobalt blue as opposed to a light blue on this costume, but I still think the lighter blue is pretty cool too. But that's it after that. This is the most comic accurate cinematic Spider-Man costume ever made as of right now. But just for shits and giggles sake, I'm going to compare the top three most accurate costumes against each other and tell you which ones I believe are more accurate than the others. I'm also going to be omitting the Amazing Spider-Man 1 and the Spider-Man Homecoming Stark suit from this debate as those costumes are pretty much redesigns that heavily inspire themselves from the classic suit, but if you really want my opinion, obviously the Amazing Spider-Man 1 suit is the least accurate, and the Stark suit is more accurate than the Tasm 1 suit. That doesn't mean I dislike those costumes. I still love the Tasm 1 suit, even if it doesn't look at all like the original. So in first place is obviously the No Way Home classic suit, but you just watched a video about it, so you know that. And I'm gonna skip to the part where I give my opinion and people threaten to blow up my house. The second most accurate suit is where the contention comes up for me. I know the really easy answer to this question would be the TASM 2 suit and my house wouldn't be burnt to the ground, but I wouldn't be able to sleep at night if I just called it a day at that. I think the Raimi suit is more accurate. Let me explain myself. The Raimi suit has a more pointed belt, a big back logo that covers almost all of his back horizontally and not just vertically. The red is brighter, and even if the blue is dark at times, the blue has been dark on Spider-Man before. The TASM 2 suit has a less consistently bright red fabric, long logos that are kind of awkward, and a less pointed belt than the original. I also think that for how large the lenses are, there's not really a lot of bordering on them either. Like even back in the day when Spidey upgraded to bigger lenses, his lenses would have thicker borders as well. At least for the Raimi suit, it makes sense for the lenses to not have thicker borders since they're that small. Honestly, 
I could see some people pointing to the silver webbing as an immediate disqualification for the Raimi suit's accuracy, but for me that's not enough to put it over the Tasm II suit. Since the web pattern on the Raimi suit is evenly spaced out and much more broad than the Tasm II suit, which reminds me of John Romita Sr.'s art of the character. Due to Tasm II's darker fabrics, odd proportions, less lens bordering, and weirder logos, I have to put the Raimi suit above it. Please don't blow up my hat. In all honesty, I think we had a pretty close real-life adaptation of the Spidey suit for a long time. I just think the silver webbing put a lot of people off, and when they saw Andrew's darker webbing, they immediately flocked to calling this accurate while ignoring the odd proportions on this outfit. But that doesn't really matter anymore because Tom's costume has blown everyone else's out of the water. Tom has done it. He is in the most comic accurate suit. And let's just hope that the character under the mask can follow suit. Uh, really wish that, that Tom didn't have to meet up with Toby and Andrew while he was wearing the integrated suit. This is like a title card, so, or end card, or whatever, so I'm gonna talk about whatever the fuck I want while eating my goddamn pasta or whatever, but... He should not have been wearing that thing. Like, he looks the least like Spider-Man there. That's cringe. Like... I would have preferred him staying in the Far From Home outfit. That one is way better. Also, the series is over until they come out with a new costume. It's an adaptation of another costume. Unless you guys want me to go over the Far From Home suit, but that really that one doesn't really have any comic ties to it, but I'll talk about it. I'll talk about it if you tell me to talk about it. I'll see y'all next time.